have a have a proper fire safety system in place. <laughs> if you're dealing with chemicals, have have safety measures in place. How many of us, uh, you know, as as manufacturers, actually give PPE, which is personal protective equipment, uh, to our employees? You know, these are little things. As far as human resources are concerned, we can do which can make them feel important. Innovation is a critical part here because you know it is your employees who, who have the knowledge. You encourage them to come up with uh, innovative technologies. You know BMW and Porsche have have actually saved millions of pounds because their employees came up with innovative techniques. You know, these are your examples that you can look at. Human rights and other policies are critical. Now, we, we talk about sexual harassment, we talk about non-discrimination, but uh, do, we, do we actually implement it instead? You know, a woman employee comes and says that uh, she has been harassed. What corrective action? Are, 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 we, are we sincere in dealing with it or are we just look away from it? No, these are the things which we are going to look at uh, on this aspect. <coughs> Governance, I, I don't want to talk much about it, you know, try because we are dealing with it today. But here what is important is what is the driver of CSI? You know? Is it your vision? Is it ethics? It is, is it the pressure from the consumers? Is it, is it the governmental pressure? Is it your reputation or anything else? You know, it is very, very critical as to what drives your CSR. Is it driven by your core values? Who is responsible for, for implementing the CSR? We, we all talk about CSR, it's become fancy. But do you, do you have a team in place? Who is accountable? You know, where it is being driven from. Composition of board of directors, appointment of board of directors, they are all very, very important, critical. But uh, let me talk more about ethics and integrity because it is very, very important. The do's and don'ts have to be clearly specified. You know, it should not be as far as governance is concerned that you show me the face and I'll tell you the rule. You know, it has to be driven from the top. It has to be led from the top and it should be universally applicable, you know. If, if you have a norm in place, it has to be followed by your MD and your housekeeping staff, you know, the lowest level of your employee. And if, you know, there are different rules and different norms for, for different levels of staff, then it's not going to be sustained. Within ethics and integrity, a critical aspect is your whistle blowing policy. Do you have a whistle blower policy in place to to check fraud? You know, to, to take up concerns. Do you have a ombudsman office where where an employee who is blowing the whistle can feel confident and and you know come up with the demands. And, and, and also feel secure that his name would be not disclosed. You, know. you have a policy in place on whistleblowing which protects the interest of the whistleblower. You have systems in, in place to investigate you know, the concerns which have come up and how do you address it. All these are very, very critical. Supply chain is a very, very important aspect. You have to have a code of conduct in place for, for all your vendors, your business partners, and, and, and your suppliers. And you have to make sure that it is implemented. One of the critical areas where you can begin with is, is child labor. You know, people have been talking about child labor. People just talk about it. How, how, how many of us as corporates really, you know, ensure that proactive measures are taken to ensure that no more child labor 
would be working in our supply chain. You know, how many of us ensure that at least the minimum wages are, are paid to the workers? We all talk about permanent workers, regular workers, you know, who are taken care of. But what about the temporary workers, the contract workers, and the so-called host workers? You know, the host workers are the migrant workers who work for you and whose names do not even feature on, on your book, books of records. You know, because you, you don't want to show that you employ them. So, you know, we should we should look at these aspects with sincerity and create a supply chain to be ethical to follow our code of conduct and have monitoring systems in place and training imparted to these vendors and suppliers that they understand, internalize and follow the code of conduct. And if anyone is doing it, you know, you should be rewarded. You know, a simple reward can be you can give them more business. Reputation and image is, is critical. You know, what is your market reputation it is very, very important. What kind of media coverage have you received over the years? Is it positive? Is it negative? What kind of awards you have received over the year? You may have gone wrong, but what what kind of proactive measures have you taken to correct where you've gone wrong? You know, I think if you have done that, it should be considered. Uh, this this criteria also has negative ratings. You know, we have taken negative ratings into consideration while while designing this. Now, these are the six aspects we are looking into. Uh, there can be more. Uh, we, are, we are open to suggestions and, and ideas. <coughs> Let's come to the last question. I want to conclude by saying, you know, we, we are profit-making organizations. But the question is, why, why do good? And the answer is, it increases sales and market share strengthens your brand positioning, enhances your co corporate image and clout, increases ability to attract, motivate and retain employees, decreases operating costs. You know, this is one question which, which I have been asked very often as a person. If you are conserving energy, or if you're, you know, just to give you an example, or if you are cutting down on the food of water, or if you are reusing or recycling you know, water or your waste, you are actually saving. You should have proper MIS systems in place to track that and and to to demonstrate it to your employees, to your board members that we have done this. And, and that is how you have a why, you know. It also increases appeal to investors and financial analysts. Now, um, you know, private equity firms are actually going in for social and environmental due diligence. They are not just looking at uh, the financial bottom line. You know. They want to know what are the environmental and social liabilities which they are going to inherit if they invest. So I leave you with that and thank you for your <coughs> And I welcome any suggestions or questions.